Next up, we have Zebstrika. Pokemon fans had long wanted a zebra Pokemon, and the fifth generation, notorious for its creative inventions, provided a wonderful spin on it. Not only is it an electric zebra, but it's also based on two of the steeds, Bronte and Serope, I hope I'm pronouncing those right, that pulled the chariot of Greek sun god Helios, steeds named for the Greek terms for lightning and thunder, respectively. Zebstrika was a favorite among in-game players of Pokemon Black and White, as its pre-evolution, Blitzel, was available early on. They would also have to face and come to understand its power when battling the electric gym leader, Alessa. Today, we're going to examine how Zebstrika performed in that harshest of terrains, the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Zebstrika actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Zebstrika was blessed with an excellent base speed stat of 116, getting the jump on those base 115s already considered among the fastest Pokemon around. It also had two excellent abilities that absorbed opposing electric moves in Lightning Rod and Motor Drive, which not only granted an immunity, but meant being hit by one would boost its special attack or speed, respectively. It even had the hidden ability Sap Sipper, whose attack boost upon being hit by grass moves wouldn't do much for Zebstrika, but the immunity to grass moves would be amazing, giving Zebstrika more room to switch in. Finally, Zebstrika was one of the few electric types blessed with powerful fire type coverage, able to roast electric resistant grass types with overheat. Sadly, those were pretty much all of Zebstrika's good qualities, which didn't bode well for its success. It wasn't that those qualities weren't valuable, because they were, it was that they were overshadowed by Zebstrika's flaws, which were as plentiful as they were adversely impactful. Poor bulk and defensively unimpressive monoelectric typing isn't great, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Just look at Manetric. Zebstrika, however, was no Manetric. Manetric was actually offensively threatening, whereas Zebstrika was not. Like most electrics, it had a move pool geared towards special attacking and a base special attack set of 80. For reference, this makes it weaker than Primpla. If Zebstrika's special attack had been swapped with its perfectly solid base 100 attack, it would have been much better off. Instead, it was just too weak to actually perform in practice, even in matchups where it seemed threatening on paper. Even most of its super effective hits required its targets to be significantly damaged before they were in any sort of KO range. This in and of itself wasn't a death sentence for a Pokemon that could repeatedly switch in and out of battle to soften opposing teams up before cleaning them up. For example, Choice Scarf Flygon and DPP OU wasn't threatening to any healthy team, but it got so many opportunities to hit the field that it eventually wore the opposition down and be able to clean them up. However, with Zebstrika's frailty and near complete dearth of useful resistances, it wasn't able to hit the field anywhere near as much as it would need to in order to fulfill such a role. As it was thoroughly inept both offensively and defensively, it should come as no surprise that that Zebstrika tumbled through the tiering rung, unable to find any sort of niche. Its best hope was in Enyu, where offensive and defensive power levels were at their lowest. There, Zebstrika could actually make okay use of its undeniably excellent, highly valuable speed to pick off frail offensive Pokemon with its electric stab, while its coverage was significantly strong to threaten many common electric resists and immunities. Plus, its electric immunity was valuable in letting it potentially stuff the ever-present Volt Switch, coming from the many other electric types in the tier. However, that was also its main problem. There were many any other electric types in the tier, and pretty much all of them were better than Zebstrika. Their superior attacking and defensive stats made them far more effective both offensively and defensively on a game-to-game -game basis, and even their move pulls had more depth, variability, and thus usefulness to them. Zebstrika's speed and electric immunity, while useful, failed in comparison and was demonstrably minuscule next to the all-around excellence and consistency offered by the likes of Rotom Frost, Rotom Fan, and Electros. Even the rare Electabuzz was generally going to be a better choice. Zebstrika Zebstrika wasn't outright bad or unviable, it had a small niche. However, it was incredibly specific, and wasn't seen much. In fact, its usage was so low that it was branded with the dishonor of being untiered, meaning it was generally not recommended for anyone looking to play seriously and win. At least it still had some small niche. Zebstrika certainly didn't have the greatest debut generation, but it wasn't quite the worst either. For Pokemon with such low and or poorly distributed stats, that was generally a good thing. Zebstrika was given a terrific buff in Generation 6. No, it didn't get a Mega Evolution, though Mega Zebstrika sounds insanely cool. It didn't get any stat buffs or ability buffs or moveset buffs. In fact, if anything, it was nerfed, as Thunderbolt, Overheat, and Hidden Power all had their base power lowered, further compounding Zebstrika's pre-existing power issues. This was already bad enough for a Pokemon that had struggled, and when you realize that the power creep of a new generation has a nasty tendency to exacerbate this, well, Zebstrika didn't expect much going in. 
However, the invention of a new lowest tier PU was just what Nurse Joy ordered. The power level was just low enough for Zipstrika to carve out a niche for itself. Its excellent speed was on full display as it naturally outran one of the fastest Pokemon in the tier, Floatzel. Once it was in, it could threaten frail offensive teams with ease between its speed and super effective coverage. Against bulky teams with walls, Zipstrika couldn't break through solo, like Eviolite -like Clefairy, Zipstrika would become part of a team effort to disassemble the opposing core, making it valuable even if it was walled itself. It was useful for creating situations where its dangerous teammates could force huge damage on the opponent, eventually letting them break through and winning the game. Zipstrika was a particularly good partner for one of the best wall breakers and overall Pokemon in the tier, Stoutland, as it massively threatened pretty much everything that answered Zipstrika and was able to rip through pretty much the entire tier. However, Zipstrika had one significant problem. It once again had to compete with Rotom Frost, which was one of the two best Pokemon in the tier alongside Stoutland. Its stats and viciously powerful, perfectly complementary secondary stat Blizzard made it a much more well-rounded Pokemon that fit onto many teams. However, though this made it difficult to justify Zipstrika, its niche was not simply lip service. Being able to outrun as many Pokemon as Zipstrika did without the need of a choice scarf was huge. The absolutely incredible trait of outrunning something as Floatzel extended to let it outrun several other Pokemon also considered fast, such as Jumpluff, Dojo, and Leafeon, and Zepstrika destroyed them all. This niche was more specific than Rotom Frost, but remained entirely legitimate, giving Zepstrika's user invaluable in-battle flexibility against these high-speed threats without the constraints of Choice Scarf, which made it more of an offensive threat and cleanup option as well. The lack of a Stealth Rock weakness certainly didn't hurt either, so all in all, Zepstrika had a solid role in Generation 6 PU. Sadly, PU experienced a massive surge of power creep in Generation 7, power creep whose plans did not include anything for Zepstrika. As such, it was even more dwarfed than usual, even more stunningly weak in comparison to its competitors, and competitors there were more of than ever. Its speed was great as usual, but speed alone isn't helpful if you can't use it to do anything, and that was certainly the case with Zepstrika. It just wasn't ever worth using over other electrics, including arguably the best Pokemon in the tier, Electros, or other excellent variant options in Lantern, or Rikorio Pom Pom, Alolan Raichu, and as always, Rotom Frost. With nary a viable moveset, Zepstrika fell to untiered once again. And that's it, so how good was Zepstrika actually? Well, it has served as an excellent example of Game Freak at their most sadistic. It could have been in a long, proud tradition of the fast electric type special attacker, but it was given a paltry base 80 special attack stat, and to really rub salt in the wound, was also given a completely useless base 100 attack stat. It managed to establish a good niche for itself in Generation 6 PU, but it's always landed in the same tier as many other electric types, and next to those, it's almost always the least appealing option, permanently competing against lower tier legend Rotom Frost has really hurt it. It would be lovely to see Zepstrika get some serious buffs in the future, at least enough to be a force in PU. That doesn't seem like it's asking too much, so here's hoping Game Freak makes up for their cruelty and blesses its mane with more, better tools. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments I want to know what do you think about competitive Zepstrika, how would you buff it because it really needs some buffs, whatever it is let me know in the comments, and thank you so much to our patrons for continuous support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.